why do you think now is the perfect time for people to know this story and really understand what it takes to be about what you say you are about, no matter how hard life has been to you? I think one, thank you so much for having us and allowing us this opportunity to share. Um, as beautiful as time was and raved about across the whole world, it just didn't go far enough in really telling the full story of what had happened uh, with our family. And so it was incumbent upon us to tell other people that are challenged with the criminal justice system um, that fighting and winning against the system for your freedom, your liberty, is something that is possible for all of us, even the ordinary human being. We know that there are people that have had someone in their family that went to jail for something, but you took the time not only to talk about your own experience, but to talk about that of another family member. Why was that important for you in this documentary? I just think that so many of us in America, when you think about the statistics that says that one in three Americans are behind bars, when you think about um, one, I'm sorry, one in two are living with a felony conviction, this is not just a poor people's problem. It's not just a white problem or a black problem, but it's an American problem when we continue to leave the entire world in incarceration. And so to me, we can't stop having this conversation until we stop being the um, incarcerating, uh, incarceration capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And then if I might add, I would uh, probably borrow from uh, one of the uh, statements that uh, Toni Morrison made in the uh, in the Globe in 2019, when she said that the function of freedom uh, is rooted in freeing others. And we share a, uh, a similar um, quote of our own that says to be free is to free others. So when I think about all of the people that I left behind after 21 years of being incarcerated, I had not only a duty, but an obligation uh, to give to those people the same thing that I had been striving for. Because on a lot of these uh, instances or whatever, these are not people that are truly incorrigible. These are people that have just made a bad choice or a bad decision in life that landed them in prison. But because our country is so uh, hell-bent on, uh, on slavery, even, you know, even in this form, um, that people are given uh, excessive sentences for what would really amount to minor crime. So it is, uh, again, like I said, just been our duty and our obligation to extend freedom to other people. And when you think about harsh sentences, like you said, 61 years is what you were about to look at. <laughs> To end up only serving 21 sounds like only is crazy, but 21 is still a long time. So what do you say to those out there, especially the teens in our area that think, you know, one little thing, one little five minute, whatever, is not going to land me somewhere for the rest of my life? And that is such a big question. And I would probably say that we um, we would encourage them that nothing is more important than your freedom. Mm -hmm. And that when we um, um, commit offenses in the society, we give this this um country an opportunity to enslave us again because according to the 13th amendment you are free unless you are um guilty of the commission of a crime and so for me it's just not a risk that we in particular african american people in this country that have fought so diligently for our freedom it is just not a risk that we're willing to take mm -hmm. well said no, no more to it Right, that was a mic drop. <laughs> I said, well, you know, what freedom feels like to me, you know, is Essence Fest. So to have this be shown at Essence, what does that mean for you? Oh, as a Black woman and the director on this Black-led project in my hometown of New Orleans, where I get to showcase a work that I believe in, um, to have this platform, I'm so humble. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the whole city of New Orleans is underneath us, so we can't help but bring home the victory um, at the end of Essence Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And just one of the persons that we shared this film with uh, in a word said that this feels so serendipitous. Uh, we thought about all of the other film festivals that we could have, uh, this film could have premiered at, but to have it premiere at a place that uh, that by far is uh, one of the largest gathering of, uh, of Black people and particularly Black women uh, anywhere else Earth. in the world. Uh, this is really a, ser uh, a serendipitous moment uh, to think that this uh, that this film is going to have its debut uh, at Essence in uh, the chocolate city of uh, of New Orleans. All that chocolate, just dripping chocolate <laughs> for Essence. Just for folks who might not attend Essence Fest this year, where can they watch it? And what else do you want to leave with the folks that are watching this right now 
I would tell them that uh, time waits for no one. And all the time that you have, we must use it wisely because we don't know how much time of how much of it we will have uh, on this journey. And so the time that we spend in prison, that 21 years, um, we can't get that back. But what we can do is enjoy and be impactful in the time that we have now. So um, we are hopeful that those that are at Essence Fest will join us on Saturday, July 6th at 10 a.m. at the convention center for the world premiere of Time to Unfinished Business. And for those that are not after we finish working this festival circuit, we will just have to get back on here with you to tell you where we land. <laughs>